In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, it is part two of James's Mock Draft 1.0. In the first episode, we covered the lottery. And in this episode, we're going to cover picks 15 through 30. This draft is wide open. There are a lot of players who believe they are first-round picks, a lot of agents who believe their clients are first-round picks. So find out which players are the remaining 15 picks in James's Mock Draft 1.0. Stay tuned. Big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. And in this case, hopefully it's your second listen because we already dropped the first half of James's Lottery, the first 14 picks earlier today. So we are dropping two episodes today. We just dropped two episodes yesterday. We are your source for draft content five days a week. So once again, thank you for making the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first or your second listen of the day. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. I don't know what's taking so long, but please subscribe, like, share, comment, click the bell so you get notifications every time we drop because we are your source for NBA draft content. And like I mentioned in the episode earlier today, James and I will be live in Indianapolis at All-Star Weekend covering some of the All-Star festivities. We'll also be at Basketball Without Borders. And then we just decided that we are going to go check out some games at OTE. So if you love basketball, you love the draft, we are your source for NBA draft content. So be sure to check that out. I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It is the fastest and the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. And if you have prize picks, actually, you know what? Go to pri- get prize picks and then use the promo code locked on NBA because if you use that promo code, you'll get a first deposit match up to $100. So that is a command or demand. <laughs> but go to prizepicks.com and we'll give you, well, not me personally, but you'll get $100 for your first deposit match. All right. Let's get right into it, man. Let's go. So we'll do a recap. The Detroit Pistons took Alex Sar number one. Well, James made these picks. So James had Alex Sar go number one to the Detroit Pistons. He had Nikola Topic going number two to the Washington Wizards. Rob Dillingham going number three to the San Antonio Spurs at four. The Charlotte Hornets, James placed them with Cody Williams. And for the Portland Trail Blazers, they have Zachary Reese at number six, the Memphis Grizzlies. James sent them Tyler Smith at number seven, the San Antonio Spurs again, and they have Modest Bozellas. At number eight, the Houston Rockets went with Reed Shepard. At number nine, Ron Holland goes to the Atlanta Hawks. At number 10 and 11, back-to-back picks for the Oklahoma City Thunder. James had them selecting Keyshawn George and Deron Holmes. Keyshawn George and Deron Holmes, the second. The Chicago Bulls selected Stefan Castle, and at number 13, the Portland Trail Blazers selected T. John Salon, who was at Basketball Without Borders last year. I was there, so it's Nikola Topic. So looking forward to see who will we, who we will find at Basketball Without Borders 2024. That will be in a 2025 draft. And wrapping up the lottery, James went with Hunter Salas from Wake Forest going to the New Orleans Pelicans, addressing some of their need for depth at guard. All right, at number 15, it is the Miami Heat. Who do you have as the perfect fit for Miami at number 15? I feel like Miami, their perfect fit isn't in this draft. I think they need a big four-man. But in the time being, we will take Johnny Furphy out of Kansas. Ooh, Johnny Furphy. High riser. He's been struggling. Since the buzz started circulating around him. If I'm not mistaken, he's missed his last 10 threes. He was good against Texas Tech. He was the lone right spot in that blowout game. Okay. But again. I'm, I'm not here to knock your pick, but Johnny Furphy. Number I'm going to take Furphy. 6'9". He can shoot. He's athletic. Uh, it doesn't. I think they need a, a big four, and I think he's a three. But at 6'9", you'll take that. You got to think long-term. Uh, Jimmy Butler getting older. Uh, I think that Jaime Jaquez hit that rookie wall a little bit. So why not take Swear another three? Smack into it. 
Hey, the wall gonna get you, man. I don't care how old you are, how good you are. The wall is is there. Luckily, it's it's All Star break coming up, so yeah. they have time to recharge. All right at number sixteen, the Toronto Raptors. This pick is coming from the Indiana Pacers. Who do you have the Raptors selecting? All right, probably 16? the biggest faller. If that's the word, Jacoby Walter out of Baylor. Uh, the shooting splits don't look too good for him. Come Not, Big Twelve yeah. play, he's he's really really struggling. Like Thirty. 20 something. I mean, it's it's not good. He, he's my biggest faller, too. Yeah, the free throw line is like his saving grace right now because he's he still gets to the line, I want to say, five times a game. He's cra- How does he get to the line Man. that much without being like a he, slasher and driver? He, he has a knack for drawing he, fouls. He has a knack for drawing fouls, but you think that they still need some, some shooting guard depth there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and send him to Toronto. All right, at number 17, the Orlando Magic. Who do you All have right. the Magic selected? I want to say this is the last, the last time we did the mock. I had him going here as well. This is Dalton Connect down at Lo- in Orlando. Like I said, they don't really need to play a point guard because Paolo and Franz are going to handle the rock. Connect can shoot. He can score for one, but he can shoot. And then you can just go super jumbo with, with Connect in that possibly starting lineup. Oh, you think he can – Join the starting lineup as a rookie. I mean, so like, what are you doing at point guard, right? You don't know. Maybe you could play Suggs at the point, right? You could sound, sound like Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> you play Suggs at the point. You play Connect, Franz, whoever. So let's say Connect, Franz, Paolo. Those are your three wings. And then you got Wendell Carter at the five. Like, that's a huge lineup. They need to find a new age Mike Bibby. <laughs> that's what they need, a new age Mike Bibby, a guy that can space the floor and run a team. And run a team. I mean, he would be like the perfect fit. But do you need somebody to run it? Like, Paolo is 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 dishing. But Bibby can play off the ball just as well. I mean, he can so be like, like your, 40% from three this year. Yeah, that, that's true. But I think like, I'm, I'm just saying, a new age Mike Bibby would be perfect for that team. It's like I'm trying to think a, it a elite shooting game manager that also can elevate past being a game manager if you need him to. That's fair. All right. At number 18, it is the New York Knicks. This pick comes from the Dallas Mavericks. 18, we're going to go with Isaiah Collier here. Okay. I feel like they now need... that's the biggest faller. Well, he, he had been falling. So I, I want to say, well, on my board, he had, he had been falling. So And he, had, he was hurt. He's come back. He's looked, uh, he's looked okay coming back. Uh, that team isn't good, but he does address the need in New York in a backup ball handler. Because I don't know if Deuce is a backup point guard. He may be no, a so. third string point guard, which is nothing wrong with it. But I feel like Isaiah Collier, uh, he can, you know, push the tempo, draw and <laughs> draw fouls. He does that pretty well too. And I feel like this is a good spot for him. Yeah, that's 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 a good spot for him. I mean, it's crazy because just a few weeks back, maybe months back, we were talking about Chicago would be a good spot for him early in the lottery, but now you have him falling to number eighteen. All right, at number nineteen. The Atlanta Hawks are back on the clock. Who do you have the Hawks selected? Yeah, man, the Hawks are tough, man. They got guys everywhere, and they're not good enough, and they're not bad enough, yeah. right? So let's say Capella's not in the t- in the uh, long term plans. We're gonna go with Khalil Ware. Khalil Ware, excuse me, here out of Indiana. Mm. And let's say they move Capella, you start Okongwu, or you feel like you want to give Khalil Ware a chance to to start. But you know, Khalil Ware has a lot of talent, some upside. Uh, you know, if they keep Trey Young, Trey Young can find you ten points, and he gives them a a big that can space the floor. Hey man, Conway's uh, been potential. hitting corner threes. Potential pick and pop. Yes, pick, but pick it, pop. It, it repeats what you already have with Okongwu. I, I feel like in a sense, or maybe it's the best of Okongwu and Capella. If he's the lob threat slash rebounder, force, four spacer. Four. Yeah, I get it. All right, when we return. We will talk about picks 20 through 25. Stay tuned. I would like to introduce you to our new sponsor, Hungry Root, because Hungry Root is your partner for healthy living. It is the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality groceries and simple but healthy recipes delivered right to your door. And all you have to do is take a short, simple quiz And the quiz is going to ask you different questions about your health goals, what you like to eat, even what type of appliances you have in your kitchen. And then from your answers, they will build a personalized cart for you and it will give you your needs for the week. 
And they'll also give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to good use. Hungry Root will also recommend recipes and groceries based on your personal tastes. So all you have to do is take their suggestions. They have fresh produce, high quality meat and seafood, pantry staples, healthy snacks, sweets, ready to eat meals, and much, much more. And everything, everything from Hungry Root follows a simple standard. It's got to taste good, be quick to make and contain whole trusted ingredients. You can save hours of planning, shopping, and cooking because Hungry Root will deliver the foods that you love. And right now, Hungry Root is offering locked on NBA big board customers or listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. You heard that correct. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash locked on to get 40% off your first delivery and you can get free veggies for life. That is HungryRoot.com slash locked on L O C K E D O N. Do not forget to use our link and let them know that we sent you. All right, second segment. And the Phoenix Suns are on the clock at number 20. I'm surprised they have a pick. <laughs> Who do you have the Suns selecting at number 20? Yeah, because all the good teams have mortgaged their future to the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma yeah, right. City Thunder. Especially the them. All right, we're going to go with Z Missy here out of Baylor. Ah, okay. That, yeah. That's, you know what? what you that's mean? my favorite pick. That's your favorite pick? For 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 this. I mean, it's tar- as it's, far as fit okay. and need, they need some depth on the front court. And athletic big. He's young. I mean, I, I really, really, really like that fit there. Yeah, I was cooking right there. All right, so explain why. Why he would be a good fit in Phoenix. I mean, you said it like he's young. They needed an athletic big. Uh, again, Eubanks is probably a third string big. But like uh, Misi, he like he still has upside. Again, he shows flashes of being able to like put the ball on the ground. I told you. But again, like I said, there'll be times he just throw that ball over the backboard, man. He'll do some yeah, crazy stuff Yeah, there's times where he looks, he looks raw and there are times you see some flashes. That's what I saw. I mean, I had him high coming into the season. And he could end up being like a really, really high riser as we get closer to yeah. the draft. I think he's that that dude that every year you see a guy whose stock somehow like rises after the season is over, and I think that could mm. be him. At 21, the Pelicans are back on the clock. Who do you have the Pelicans taking? Again, very similar to Atlanta, man. They got a lot of guys at every position, and we're just going to go with uh, Almanza here from G League Ignite. And we'll try to figure it out again. They need bigs who who complement Zion. And he kind of doesn't really compliment Zion say, at all, which is crazy, right? But, like, Larry Nance has got durability issues. I'd have to look at Valanciunas' contract. You know, he's out there catching passes from Patrick Mahomes and hooping. So, I don't know. I think another <laughs> and big. And Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift. Yeah, he might, be, he might be maxed out. But we're going to go with Almanza here. I think Almanza definitely would benefit with playing with a point guard, though. In uh, CJ McCollum here, so mm-hmm. I think we'll go here. This one was really tough because like they just have so many guys. Yeah, twenty two, the Philadelphia seventy sixers. All right, so this one is a <clears throat> excuse me. This is a a a medium riser from my big board, or at least from the draft that we did last year. Last time, we're gonna go with AJ Mitchell here, another guard, somebody that can play alongside uh, Tyrese Maxey. Bigger guard off the bench for right now. You see Buddy Hill has, like, reaped returns uh, in the few games that he has played. So I feel like A.J. Mitchell could compliment Tyrese because he can play on the ball, off the ball. He's not. He's making spot of three-pointers. Again, you play with B. Like, I feel like that works for them. Okay. 23, the New York Knicks. Again, who do you have the Knicks All taking? All right. I got your boy here in New York. I feel like Isaiah Hartenstein is going to get – Paid somewhere. I don't know what to say about who. I don't know, but he is definitely going to get paid. Mm-hmm. He is outperformed that contract. He looks like, I mean, the Clippers gave him away for like a bag of chips and he can hoop. So let's say he. And a Metro pass. And a Metro pass. <laughs> let's say he moves on. We're going to go with Donovan Klingon here in New York. Ooh, I don't know where I see Klingon falling as far as if there are concerns about the foot issues. But if Klingon falls to the Knicks at 23. That like is a Thibs pick as far as just a, a defender, big guy, just kind of mucks things up. I saw some poster that said everybody's complaining about the NBA, 
scoring all these points and the Knicks are beating teams up every day and nobody oh, talks he's, about he's it. He's a perfect situation. I have concerns about his like mobility. Um, he's not as he's not moving as well as he did last year. Exactly, and that's why I have him dropping. And then just on offense, like I don't think he he doesn't give you enough to me on offense. But in New York, like you go screen for Brunson, you go deck somebody and be physical. Like I feel like that's a perfect situation for him. Okay, all right. At twenty four, the Milwaukee Bucks. Who do you have the Bucks taking? Going wing slash guard depth again, Devin Carter. All right, okay. I told you he was like he that. was rising. That jump shot looks legit. He competes. He gets after it. Should be able to play it alongside uh, Lillard in stretches, you know, because he is six two, six three himself. Definitely will have no issues playing with Giannis. So again, he is your. I don't know if you're gonna call him a combo guard. He's just a guard. Yep. Yeah. And he's a defender. So you. Address and they him. need to defend. Yep. All right, the last pick for this segment, 25, the Denver Nuggets. Who do you have joining Jokic, Murray, and Porter? All right. And Gordon. Don't want to forget Gordon. No, definitely can't forget Gordon. We're going to send Kevin McCullough out to Denver. Okay. All right. We're going to, again, I had mentioned it before, Reggie Jackson getting older, right? And then they do have some guys on the wing. You you, see, you like what you see from Peyton Watson. He's a defender. Right, you like what you see from Christian Braun. He brings energy, but they're still kind of like shaky as far as three point shooting. And we're bringing another guard who can do a little bit of everything, and maybe his three ball carries over from this college season. And you just have more guard depth. Like I said, I don't foresee them ever playing Jamal Murray more than sixty games. Not because of money, just because they want to save him for the best. They're a win now team. Yep. And you don't need to be sending him out there to play. You know, back to backs. So that's why you get guys like Kevin McCullough. All right, that's fair. All right, when we return, we'll do picks 26 through 30. Who are the last five guys that will be selected in James's Mock Draft 1.0? Passion, drive, and patience. That is what brings home the winning trophy, but it is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to choose from your ride or die your car whatever you want to call it your baby you will always find exactly what you need for it and ebay motors has the guaranteed fit in the guaranteed fit, make sure that your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you will get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, but not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and the eBay guaranteed fit is only available for U.S. customers. All right, last segment. We are wrapping this up. Only five picks left. The Los Angeles Clippers pick goes to the Oklahoma City Thunder again. Man, how many picks do they have? This is the NBA do, draft this, featuring the Oklahoma City Thunder. Do they even need these picks? Since you say that and they don't need the pick, we are swinging. Some people think this is a swinging for the fences. Okay. You know how I feel about this young man. Hanson Yang. The best offensive talent in the draft from the big position by far. All right. So this could be a draft and stash type deal here. But again, Ralph, I already told you he got game. All right. <laughs> You're gonna get some criticism from the I don't propaganda. Even care. He's he's got some game. People are starting to come around Man, look. and talk hey. about him. Actually, spoke with an agent. I don't know if I'm spilling the beans here, but I spoke with an agent who literally has sent people out to China to try to find a way to get in contact with Hanson Yang, and it sounds like he's, he might not be coming over. It sounds like his situation. Uh, but forget that. You said an agent sent somebody out there to find Hanson like, Yang? Like a, a couple people. A couple people. And they say, like, people can't get in contact with them. Like, he's 
doesn't have an agent right now. <laughs> like, you remember when you remember when <laughs> you remember in the bubble when James Harden wore that mask and then Young Thug was like, he don't have internet. <laughs> That's what Anthony Yang got. I don't know. They say they, they say they got him on lock down. Look, look. Like you NBA <laughs> vultures, stay away from him. Free hands our, next, and our next star. I'm man. telling you, man, he got he has some of the best yeah, film man. out, man. I, I hope we get a chance to see to see Hanson, but it's based off of the information I receive, like we, we might not be seeing my man in, in a while. Well it's I'm taking him we'll see. I mean if anybody can afford uh, afford to like use a pick and the dude not come over it's Oklahoma City because they got the next 27 picks in every draft. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. Good one. All right, the Cleveland Cavaliers at number 27. Again, these rankings or this order is based off of the order for February 13th. So it can change by the time you listen to this. But 27, the Cleveland Cavaliers, who do you got? All right, so this one was a tough pick. We're going best player available. They don't really need the depth. We're going to go with Kyle Filipowski here in Ooh, Cleveland. People are going to be like, well, oh, he's, again, I know some people are a lot higher on Kyle Filipowski than me, and that's cool. That's your opinion. I feel like this is where he is talent-wise. I still have a lot of questions about him. I don't know what he does at that next level. Great. But if he's your backup big – to a and he should be able to like wrote let's say I'm in my mind I'm thinking the rotation goes you sub out Jared Allen you bring in Filipowski Filipowski and uh Evan Mobley can play next to each other or you feel like if that Filipowski three ball is legit maybe you can play him and Allen together and stretches too because you see they play Dean Wade at the four but Dean Wade is a lockdown defender at the four so I feel like why not with Filipowski here in Cleveland do you believe in the shooting I don't know. I mean, he'll go one for six. He'll go one for seven. He'll go three for four. I mean, the numbers obviously balance out. But to me, it's always been his his greatest asset at the next level is going to have to be his shooting because I'm not a believer in his post game. But the the shooting has just been up and down. What is he shooting right now? It's at thirty four percent now. You see, but it, so it was like at it one was, point it was in the high twenties, low thirties. Then he had that stretch. Where he went four for four, four for five, three for six, then it brought it up to the forties. So then I looked kind of crazy, at least in my assessments, about having concerns about his shooting. And now it's come down to earth. Since then, one for six, oh for three, oh for one, one for six, oh for one, two for four, one for six. So am I crazy for not knowing if he's a I, I don't think so. Okay, cool. But he's at below fifty percent from the floor, so forty nine point eight percent field mm. goal, thirty four percent from three. 64% from the foul line. So for me, it's hard to, and I know he's skilled, but it's hard for me to envision a stretch big shooting 64%. But he's only a sophomore, so. Again, yeah, he I, can get better, but I'm just going off the film. I think he's going to have to be a stretch. I made the comparison before to Nas Reed. Like, if he's best case scenario what Nas Reed is, like Nas Reed is shooting well from three, but he's ultimately what your third big still, and he went undrafted. So like, I don't feel like I'm being disrespectful to Kyle Filipowski having him go with 27. I just don't see a lottery talent in him. No disrespect to the Filipowski brothers. I know there's nothing one playing. <laughs> All right, at number 28, you have the Utah Jazz, which is a pick from the Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> like they just play, man. Here you go. <laughs> That's like <laughs> we we can't we don't have no roster spot. You take it. It's like Dinwiddie and and, and uh, oh yeah, traded, yeah 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 that was like, wild man what do we what do we accomplish? he traded one a penny for a penny <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is probably the highest riser mm. the biggest riser okay. all right I had to stop lying to myself Jalen Tyson out of Cal okay I had him in my top thirty on my big board all, all right tell I, me about Jalen again I think Utah needs a wing. Yes, I think they need a three-man. And I feel like Lowry is best at the four. They've been playing him at the three, mm-hmm. right? I don't think John Collins is in their long-term plans. Still don't... They've been winning with him at the five, though. Yeah, but uh, see, that's the thing. Like, okay, remember all this? We getting off on the little tangent. But they all this hype, like Walker Kessler should have been a lottery pick last year. He's playing like 24 minutes a game, and they mm-hmm. can't play him over 24 minutes a game. Yeah, he's only started 15 games. So it's like, what is it? What's what's his deal? What I mean, what what are they doing long term? And even after trading Olenek and Fontecchio, like he's still playing twenty six, twenty seven minutes. 
He's got a cap. That's crazy. All right, so we'll we'll go with Jalen Tyson here, assuming that uh, you want Lowry to play the four long term, and maybe you still want to play John Collins and rotate them. But I, I feel like Jalen Tyson at six seven, he's a scorer. He just brings a lot to the table. He can pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's, he's a very good rebounder. Very yeah. good rebounder. He's really, really good. I, my biggest, really my only concern with him is just like he doesn't finish at the rim as efficiently as I would like him to at 6'7", but like he, he can play. And we've seen him in a, a drilled down role at Texas Tech. If you just say, hey, man, just shoot, catch and shoot threes, like we think he can do that too. Okay. All right. Down to the last two. Yeah. Minnesota Timberwolves. Who do you have Minnesota taking at 29? All right. So, there have been rumors of them having to make a choice with Cat's contract coming up and it's getting paid. That should go into effect next season. Uh, my man Jaden McDaniels, he got paid, mm-hmm. right? We know Rudy is getting paid. So He's going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Should he? He's going to win Defensive Player of the All Year. All right, that's opinion. cool. I'm not going to argue with a regular season award. But I think that they have – Front court, they'll need somebody on the front court if they have to move off a of cat. I'm high on this dude. You really are not a, a fan of his, but I don't really care about you right now. Dylan Mitchell out of Texas. Okay. Yeah, I think if, if the Wolves win and they go deep in the playoffs, they're going to bring those guys back. They're going to figure out a way. Let me ask you a question. They're number one right now, right? Let's say they draw the Lakers in the AC, do you think they're good enough to beat the Lakers? Yes. Okay, so if they beat the if they lose to the Lakers, what do you do? I think you or, okay, okay, let's not say the Lakers. All right, my fault, Rob. Let's say they draw the Mavs. Now I don't think they can beat the Mavs even with that size, because guess what? That is the kryptonite for Rudy Gobert and Towns. Like what they're gonna do with Luca and Kyrie and the Mavs got Bigger, I, I mean. So, what do you do? Uh, I don't you know. Could, I mean, but you you, you legit... saw them give the Clippers fits because their size against the Clippers. That's true, but like that's Luca on the other end of that. That's the mm-hmm. pick and roll savant right there. Like, okay, well, how are you gonna Rudy Gobert? How are you gonna stay on the floor guarding Luka Doncic? Well, we what know I, you can't switch. What I think what will end up happening with Minnesota is they may have a series where they don't play a lot of cat and. And and um, Rudy together, but then it may be a series they do. So I think the mindset is the versatility to where we can have options. So I think they'll be fine. I I just feel like they could. This kind of sounds crazy. They could go to the Western Conference Finals, or they could lose in the first round. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised. About it, every team, not the Nuggets. I don't think the Clippers are losing in the first round. I mean, if the I don't I mean I don't think it'll happen, but if somehow the Nuggets and Wolves matched up in the first round, I think that would be very interesting. They gave them a game last they year, a last series year, last year, but maybe even I think for some reason the Lakers, even though Nah, the Lakers can't beat they nah. can't they nah. they make it close. And that they was, make it that close. Was fake. They have no answer for Jokic. I mean, nobody does, but they, they really don't have an they, answer. They 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 somewhat kind of make it make it a little bit close. All right. We have one more pick left in James's mock draft 1.0. All right. So who is going to be the last player selected in James's mock draft 1.0? This pick goes to the Boston Celtics. Who you got? Another another high riser, maybe even bigger than Jalen Tyson. We'll go with Jameer Watkins out of Florida State. They don't have a need. They really don't have any needs, right? But let's say they make a deep playoff run, which they are on schedule to do. You're going to need some wing minutes there. Drew is is in his 30s. Feels like Derek White is 35, but he's not, <laughs> <laughs> right? So we're going to go Jameer Watkins at, at the three. Again, I think he's a first-round talent, even with the jump shot concerns. But, like, you know, you could, you could play him next to – because, you know, Tatum does play the four at times when they definitely, when they rest um, Horford. So, like, they're, they're, there are potential wing minutes there in Boston. Not a lot, but it's something that you can potentially work with. All right. Let, let's name a few guys that were left off your big board. Ryan Dunn, for example, was left off. 
DJ Wagner, Bobby Clintman, Oso Igadaro, Zach Eady. I'm, I'm shaking my head, not because I don't like them, but I just don't feel like they're first-round picks. Tyrese Proctor, Trey Alexander, Jared McCain, Ulrich Chomchi, Tyler Kolick, PJ Hall, Zivonimir Isovich, Justin Edwards. He needs to go back to school. Uh, there's no way he's going back to school. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Aaron Bradshaw. He should, he should do the Khalil Ware plan. Transfer. Yeah. Aaron Bradshaw. So he had quite a few names, but I think that's going to be what draft day is like because there are at least 45 guys. Now, the guys you mentioned, if you, when I pull up my big board, right? So you said Tyrese Proctor, I got him 34. Ryan Dunn, I got him 35. Ironically, DJ Wagner, I got him 36. Trey Alexander, I got him 39. So it's like I have guys. But they're uh, not in your first round. They're not in my first round. But again, who knows what's going to happen in June? Yep. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. This is James's Mock Draft 1.0, picks 15 through 30. If you missed the first episode, check it out. We did the lottery. Once again, it's Raphael with James. Check us out in Indianapolis. We are headed to Naptown, Circle City. Once again, we are out. Oh.